those who are here with us and those who are online. First question, do you know what is the meaning of September? Do you know what is the meaning of September? Anyone? It means the end of summer. It means back to work. Holiday is over. If you are in the agri agricultural field, that means you have to start sowing the seeds, planting the seeds, so that there will be a harvest to come in the months ahead. And so we are back here this morning, back to service unto the Lord. But first, we begin with worship. So Father, we thank you for your presence here. We thank you for all the wonderful saints who are assembled here in your house. And we come to you this morning, Father, in the multitude of mercy and grace. And Lord, in the fear of you, we will worship you in your house. For I know, Lord, those who have put their trust in your name, Lord, they will rejoice in your presence. Those who have called upon your name, who love your name, Lord, they shall be joyful in you. Because I know you will bless the righteous. And Lord, you will surround them each and every one of them as a shield with your favour. So Lord, we want to commit this time to you as we come together to worship you. And we pray, Lord, that we will lift up our hearts and our hands unto you and our voices and that you be enthroned in our praises. And we thank God, Lord, that week after week, we have got wonderful worshippers who will lead us into the most holy place so continue to pour your anointing upon Brother Marcus and his team. And then, thereafter, Lord, break the bread of life even through your servant, Elder Martin. Lord, we desire a blessed time, a fruitful time in your presence. And everyone says, Amen. 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 Good morning, church. 
Wow, how wonderful it is to see so many of you um, in this place. As we begin, as usual, let's greet one another, right? Shall we greet one another? Um, and let's give the neighbors around you a high five, handshake, a fist bump, and say it's great to see you here this morning. We're going to let praise arise from this place, amen. This place is the praise, it's a place of praise, amen. Put your hands together. Praise is rising, eyes are turning to you. We turn to you. Oh, 
cry, Hosanna, Hosanna, Hosanna. God save us. Hosanna, God save us, Lord. From wherever we are, from whatever circumstance we are in, Lord, God save us. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. We welcome your sweet, sweet presence in this place. We lift up our hands and we welcome. Thank you, Father. Amen. Let's give Him praise. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Well, this morning we're gonna we're gonna sing a new song. No, our band. Uh, we we practiced it last week. Uh, and, uh, I mean yesterday. Um, it's a new song. Um, not an easy song to say the least. But um, as we are reflecting on the words and the lyrics and the chorus of these songs, this is what the writer of this song described. It is a vertical worship, right? It's high praise. The lyrics of these songs describes and reveals the revelation of God, our Creator. And in response, we can only magnify His name. And the song is titled, A Thousand Hallelujah. So as we are introducing this song to you, as we learn together, we hope you will be able to catch on the song. And let's lift a thousand hallelujahs to our King.
For we have words to praise you, Lord. Lift up your name. We worship you in this place. Thank you, Lord. Let's continue to fix our eyes on Him. As you welcome His presence.
Yeah. 
humble by your presence here and Lord Jesus we are so humble by all that you have done for us your sacrifice your finished work at Calvary and Father we just want to thank you for your multitude of mercy and grace and even a thousand hallelujahs they are not enough to thank you for all that you have done for me. But nonetheless, we will continue to exalt you day in and day out, forever and evermore. In Jesus' name. And everyone says, Amen. 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 Praise the Lord. Please take your seats. Is there anyone here who is visiting us for the first time? First time. Anyone? Kichu, one. Kichu, two. Some more. Can I ask you all a simple question? 
in the last few months, uh, have you enjoyed your time in the presence of God in the sanctuary? Have you? You have, right? It's a good thing, right? And good things you must not keep to yourselves, right? You must share, right? So, please invite someone to come and occupy the seat next to you. That's all. Not because we want to mark attendance, because we want to introduce them to our Lord Jesus. We want them to experience what we are experiencing week in and week out. The presence of our Lord Jesus Christ in our midst. Can you do that? Amen. I see all the nodding heads. Okay, I will look for you next week. Great. Um, we have got just some announcements. Can you show them up? Quite yet. Okay, ne never mind. You know, on Thursday last, we had a wonderful event. And that event was the Thursday luncheon. We have not had this for two years during COVID. And we wanted to gather the folks from the community of Chai Chi to come. And I tell you, it was a successful event. I will not say any more. I will leave the rest to Elder Martin. But I just want to say thank you to all the volunteers. Okay, Elder Martin will expand on that later. Now, next... Next. Now you see, I'm so blessed to have Pastor Adrian with me because he has taken a big load off my shoulder and he is so versatile. He can minister to the young all the way to the old. So you see, this pillar of prayer, he's addressing the youth this afternoon. So please come at 2 p.m. If you feel young, you may not look so, but if you feel young, please come. Okay, the pillar of prayer. And then on Friday, he'll be addressing the other extreme end. These are the senior saints. So it will be on Zoom. That is the foundation of prayer. Uh, I guarantee you the message is different. The title is different. Okay, don't, don't expect the same thing. So if you feel old, though you do not, you can also attend. Okay? So, now I know Pastor Shane. He is a good friend of mine. He is a funny man. And if you've got kids who just want that moment of, uh, of uh, you know, humour, but spice with the Word of God, with the teaching of God, please come. No, it should be the Word of God spiced with humour. I am in contrast. Okay, but anyway, please come. Now, we, we, we sent out this survey last week. So far, we have received about 250 responses from both the English and the Chinese. But in total, we have almost 1,000 registered members of Bethesda Cathedral. So for the rest of you, if your phone, you have not received, we will send you again. Okay, let's just click on the link, just a couple of questions and let us know because we want to update the register. So those who are active with us and those who have chosen to move on, it's okay. We just want to know who are with us when we are calling everyone to the front line for battle? We want to know when we turn around, is there anyone? So far, got 250. We need more. Okay? So, please complete that survey as soon as you can. It is very simple. Just one, two questions only. Anything else? Mayo. Okay, come. Now, we want to worship the Lord in giving. Now, let it not just be a ritual. Let it not just be a routine. Just dig into your pocket, whatever change there is, and, and just put into the offering bank. This is worship. And if you read Corinthians, that means you come prepared. You come with intention. You come to give regularly, willingly, joyfully unto the Lord. And this we must do. Right? It is not giving unto the church. It is giving unto the Lord. It is between you and the Lord. So, Father... It is you who gave us the power to gain wealth. Not of our own. You gave us the ability and you favour us in so many ways that these blessings come our way. And so, Lord, with all that we have from you in our hands, we want to return unto you a portion of your blessings upon us. Lord, we ask that you will bless this giving and you will use it for the multiplication of your kingdom. And bless the giver as well, Father. In Jesus' name. And everyone says...
Amen. Now, to continue the series on rebuilding the walls, I, I hope you are learning something, right? We have chapters 1, 2, and 3 done. Today, it is chapter 4. And it gives me great pleasure to call the chairman of the church board, Elder Martin Wong. Please listen fast because he speaks fast. Right, good morning, brothers and sisters. God bless all of you. It's wonderful to be here and great to see everyone again. And to those who have joined us online, we're so happy that you can be with us watching through your, your, your device. And God bless you and may the Lord's presence be close to you as well. Shall we read this morning uh, Nehemiah chapter 4, verses 1 to 9, and then we link up with verses 16 to 23. Nehemiah chapter 4, verse 1 to 9, and then link up to 16 to 23. When Sanballat heard that we were rebuilding the wall, he became angry and was greatly incensed. He ridiculed the Jews and in the presence of his associates and the army of Samaria. And he said, what are those feeble Jews doing? Will they restore their wall? Will they offer sacrifices? Will they finish in a day? Can they bring the stones back to life from those heaps of rubble burned as they are? Tobiah the Ammonite who was at his side said, What are they building? Even a fox climbing on it would break down their wall of stones. Hear us, O God, for we are despised. Turn their insults back on their own heads. Give them over as plunder in the land of captivity. Do not cover up their guilt or blot out their sins from your sight. For they have thrown insults in the face of the builders. So we rebuilt the wall till all of it reached half its height for the people worked with all their heart. But when Sonbalat, Tobiah, the Arabs, the Ammonites and the people of Ashot heard that the repairs of Jerusalem's walls had gone ahead and that the gap were being closed, they were very angry. They all plotted together to come and fight against Jerusalem and stir up trouble against them. But we prayed to our God and posted a guard day and night to meet this threat. Verse 14, uh, verse 16, from that day on, half of my men did the work while the other half were equipped with spears, shields, bows and armour. The officers posted themselves behind all the wall of Judah who were building the wall. Those who carried materials did their work with one hand and held a weapon in the other. And each of the builders wore his sword at his side as he worked, but the men who sounded the trumpet stayed with me. Then I said to the nobles, the officials, and the rest of the people, the work is extensive and spread out, and we are widely separated from each other along the wall. Wherever you hear the sound of the trumpet, join us there. Our God will fight for us. So we continued the work with half the men holding spears from the first light of dawn till the stars came out. At that time, I also said to the people, have every man and his helper stay inside Jerusalem at night so they can serve us as guards by day and as workers by night. Neither I, nor my brothers, nor my men, nor the guards with me took off our clothes. Each had his weapon, even when he went for water. Let us pray. Our gracious Lord and Heavenly Father, Lord, we want to thank you for your wonderful presence that is already here in our midst, O oh God. We want to thank you for a wonderful time of worship where we can just lift up our voices, Lord to declare how great, how awesome, how mighty you are. Truly, truly, Lord, a thousand hallelujahs to your name that is worthy to be praised and worthy to be exalted, O God. Lord, this morning we ask that you come and take these words and make it come alive to us. Holy Spirit, speak to us. Speak to our individual circumstances, our individual situation. May your word today instruct us, correct us, teach us, build us, encourage us, and spur us on towards love and good deeds, O Lord. 
Father, we pray for your special anointing to be upon each of my brothers and sisters gathered here, for your special anointing to be on those watching online. Lord, may they receive from you, may they hear from you today, Lord, your word, your revelation, your deliverance, your healing. In the name of Jesus, Lord, we pray against every distracting thoughts in our minds. We command them to be gone in the name of Jesus. And right now, Lord, we give you all the glory and all the praise. You are worthy to be exalted and praised. In Jesus' name we pray. And all God's people say, and all God's people say, give the Lord a wonderful hand. Praise the Lord. Amen. A thousand hallelujahs. Amen. Still not enough to praise our Lord. Thousands upon thousands, hallelujah, because our God is worthy to be praised, to be worshipped, and to be adored. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. So to recap, brothers and sisters, in chapter 1, remember that the Jewish uh, leader Nehemiah, after he received news that Jerusalem was, was in ruins, was in shambles, right? He, he was so moved in his heart, remember? He, he was so moved in his heart, he began to wrestle with God. He began to struggle with God um, over the dismal state of affairs in the city. And then in chapter 2, we saw how God was now beginning to move the pieces, right? He was beginning to uh, direct the steps of Nehemiah so that he could be at the right place at the right time um, to meet the right people, to say the right thing so that he could be on his way to fulfill his kingdom assignment to help lead in the rebuilding of Jerusalem's walls. And then in chapter 3, chapter 3, the rebuilding was now in full swing, right? It was in full swing and I believe uh, we were all blessed by last Sunday's message by Elder Caleb. Remember all the, all the gates? Remember? Yeah, all the gates. I mean, he covered all the gates, the fish gate, the old gate, the valley gate, and so on and so forth. And isn't it amazing? Beloved, last Sunday, if you heard the message, isn't it just so wonderful that there's so much application, right? So much application in our walk of faith. It's so germane with respect to our growth in the Lord and our walk of faith and our maturation in Christ. Each of those gates represent something, right? Now you've got to listen to remember because there's so much covered there. It represents something in our spiritual life and in our spiritual house as well. Amen? It represents something. And now in chapter 4, Beloved, the Scriptures is drawing our attention to several key principles and several key insights. Because like Nehemiah, our church today has wasted no time and is now in full swing in the work of rebuilding. We are now in full swing of rebuilding. Brothers and sisters, we are rebuilding our gates, our walls. We are moving forward in faith. And I can tell you, brothers and sisters, people can see it, they can feel it, they can sense it, and we are making progress. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord, isn't it? Amen. Come on, a thousand hallelujahs. A thousand, 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 hundreds and thousands of hallelujahs. Our senior pastor, leaders, pastoral staff, ministry heads, committed brothers and sisters, they are all working hard in rebuilding, restoring, refurbishing our Lord's house. Some are already planning ahead. Brothers and sisters, some are already planning ahead into 2023 and beyond. For our hardware, infrastructure, facilities, IT, you name it. These are, you know, capital expenditure items, right? You've got to plan ahead, long term. And some are also planning for our software, our platforms, our programs to build and strengthen the body of Christ, to reach out to the lost, to invite them to the house of God. And some people are, are planning ahead, some leaders are planning ahead for our next church camp, Amen. Our next church camp. Brothers and sisters, I grew up in church camp since I was in secondary school. Adrian Lim grew up in church camp. We all grew up in church camp since we were kids wearing short pants, you know. And we love church camp and so many wonderful things happen in church camp. The bonding, the fellowship. You know, our camp commandant last time was founding Pastor Tay Cheng Ki, you know. He was our camp commandant for so many church camps. The blessings, you know, the teaching, so more details will be announced. Everybody pay attention, okay? When the announcements come, please all sign up for church camp. Amen? Amen or not? Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. So the rebuilding has started. It is a journey. It is a season. And by the grace of God and by the Spirit's empowerment, we will make progress. It will be achieved bit by bit, step by step. We remain focused on the Lord and we move forward in faith. And God will help us 
as he helped the people in Nehemiah 3 and now moving into 4. So just now, Pastor Leong Saho showed a slide. Can I, can I also have uh, the first slide, please? And I just got a couple of pictures that he shared with us. And I think it's just so wonderful, brothers and sisters. Remember there was a call for volunteers in the social concerns. Do you remember that? There was a call and how many people responded? Senior Pastor Leong, can you remind me? How many people responded? 20, is it? 20 volunteers. Huh? 20 plus volunteers responded. Come on, praise the Lord. <laughs> praise the Lord. And, and having a blessed time with these folks, extending fellowship to them, loving them, chit-chatting with them, giving them a good meal. And I think, if I'm not mistaken, those are mooncakes. Are those mooncakes? Wow, any extra leftovers? <laughs> it's wonderful, isn't it? It's wonderful. And we have not had this for like how long, right? Because of COVID and what have you not. We couldn't have this. So now we are restoring. We are rebuilding. We are reinstating. Because we are not forcing the gospels down their throat. We are loving them to Christ. Amen? Have you heard of their phrase, you love them to Jesus? Yes. Sometimes you cannot force the gospel down. You have to love them to Christ. And through there, by the Spirit's work, by the Spirit's enablement, people will receive Jesus as their Lord and Savior. Amen? Amen. 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 Praise the Lord. Matthew 25, 10. Truly I tell you, whatever you did for one of the least of these my brothers and sisters, you do it unto? Unto who? Unto the Lord. Unto the Lord. We service to the Lord by serving others and serving others as service to the Lord. Amen? Amen. So for our meditation this morning and to help us remain aligned with God's plan and purposes, let's consider these perspectives so that like the people in Nehemiah 4, we can ready ourselves for the rebuilding journey ahead. Alright, it's going to be a season, it's going to be a journey as, as we saw in Nehemiah 4. There, a lot of things can happen, okay? A lot of things can happen. So we must ready ourselves for this journey so that we can fulfill our kingdom assignment in building, rebuilding our spiritual house. So our first importance, brothers and sisters, our first importance, the re, in the rebuilding journey, good progress was achieved because the people applied themselves wholeheartedly. The people applied themselves wholeheartedly. Nehemiah 4 verse 6, it says, So we rebuilt the wall till it reached half its height, for the people worked at it with all their, let's say together, with all their hearts. With all their hearts, beloved. The walls were rebuilt to half its height, 50% of their goal. Great progress, isn't it? 50% of their goal, 50% of run rate, 50% of on track for revenue. 50%. From zero base, from ground zero, they've built it all the way halfway because the people worked with all their hearts. Remember in Nehemiah 2, the city was in ruins. It was in shambles, destroyed by fire. But they applied themselves with all their hearts, not quarter heart, not half-hearted, not 75% heart, but with everything they got. They didn't count the hours. They didn't count the pennies. They gave everything they had. The wall was built to half its height. See, a lot of can be achieved when we have wholehearted devotion to our God. So the word of the Lord for us this morning is that in rebuilding our walls, the call is for us to serve wholeheartedly. To serve wholeheartedly. Not to rebuild only when they felt like it or when they had spare time. Not because the task was easy. In fact, it was the opposite. It was very tough work, beloved. Very, very tough work. Nehemiah 4.10 Even the people in Judah, the strength of the laborers is giving out. Tired already, you know. Bolat, you know. Tired already. Because there is so much rubble. It's tough work, beloved. Rebuilding is going to be tough work. There's so much rubble. So much rubbish. And there were moments, I believe, I mean, what I sense is the people also can get discouraged from time to time, dismayed from time to time, right? Because there's so much to be done. And you know what, beloved? The enemy took advantage of this. In chapter 4, verse 11, the enemy said, Before they know it or see us, we will be right there among them and we will kill them and put an end to the work. Do you realize, brothers and sisters, when we are down and discouraged, the enemy come and disturb you? Yes or not? 
That's the way you, we will be know, right? When you are down and discouraged, sometimes you're a bit down. I mean, we are all humans. We have our down days. The enemy will come and disturb you. The enemy will come and disturb you. We will put an end to the work. Yes, they fell down, but praise be to God, they did not stay down. Amen. They did not stay down. We can feel down, we can have our moments, but we cannot stay down. The enemy tried to poison their minds, but they did not entertain those seductive words. In our journey of rebuilding, there will be times we will feel down. Even if we go 100%, we go all out, there will be times we will get discouraged. For sure. Yeah? There might be lack of resources, which we know we have. <laughs> Misunderstanding sometimes. We may feel demoralized. Miscommunication. But we do not remain demoralized. We do not remain down. By the Holy Spirit's empowerment, we will get up again. We do not remain down. Weeping may remain for a night, but rejoicing comes in the... Let's say it louder. Rejoicing comes in the... Morning! Weeping may last for a night, but the next day, let's get up. Because this is the day that the Lord has made. Frustrations may be there for the night, but strength comes in the morning. Amen? The steadfast love of the Lord never ceases. His mercies never come to an end. They are new every... Praise the Lord. They are new every morning. We may be momentarily affected. We may take one or two punches, but we get up. And like the Bible says, the people applied themselves wholeheartedly. There are enough scriptural evidences, beloved, enough scriptural promises to tell us that if we give ourselves wholeheartedly, the Lord will grant us the breakthrough. The Lord will grant us the victory if we apply ourselves wholeheartedly. And this is how we will move from glory to glory and from strength to strength, not the other way around. Huh? We don't want to go the other way around. We want to move from glory to glory and from strength to strength because the glory of the latter house will be greater than the glory of the former house. Amen. Amen. From ruins to rubble to 10% to 20% to 30%, now to 50% and beyond. Nehemiah, Numbers 14.24. Numbers 14.24. Because my servant Caleb had a different spirit and follows me, there you have the word, wholeheartedly. I will bring him into the land. Who will bring him into the land? God. God will bring him to the land where his descendants will inherit it. That's his inheritance. And brothers and sisters, remember this was in Kadesh Barnea. Remember Kadesh Barnea? Right? Where they sent out the spies to go and look at the promised land. Remember the story? And then the ten spies came. Oh, the giants. Too big, ah. Uh, we can't go in. We look like what? Remember? What, what insect was it? Louder? We look like grasshoppers in the eyes of the giants. Too, too, too big, cannot. But Caleb and Joshua, no. This is the land God has given us. Amen. This is the Lord God has given us. And they brought back a report to say, this is the land God has given us. And this is the word of the Lord because Caleb followed me. Say the word. Heartedly. Wholeheartedly. Ephesians 6, 7, and 8. Ephesians 6, 7, and 8. Serve wholeheartedly. There we have it. Serve wholeheartedly. Like as if we are serving Lord. Because you know that the Lord will reward each one of for whatever good they do, whether they are slave or free. We are encouraged to serve wholeheartedly. Brothers and sisters, wholeheartedly. So let's look at our next slide. Let's look at our next uh, picture. Um, Serve wholeheartedly. And I like this picture because this picture, the heart has a lot of um, jigsaw puzzles, right? Have we all played jigsaw puzzles before? Yes, we have played jigsaw puzzles, right? We have all played jigsaw And the verse says there, You shall love the Lord with all your heart, with all your soul, and with all your strength. In Nehemiah 4, they worked and they served with all their hearts. And we must now serve the Lord with all our hearts. But we must make sure all the pieces are there. So if we look into our hearts and some of the pieces are not there, we must go and find those pieces, okay? Can or not, brothers and sisters? Can we go and find those pieces? Right, find those missing pieces and put the jigsaw puzzle back and then we can serve the Lord wholeheartedly, okay? Can or not? 
Amen. I serve the Lord wholeheartedly. To achieve progress, we must apply our time, talent, and treasures wholeheartedly. Make sure all the little pieces are there, and then we will serve our Lord wholeheartedly. You see, rebuilding the walls, rebuilding the gates will demand the very best from all of us. It will demand the best from you, from me, from all of us here in this sanctuary. May the Holy Spirit help us to rise up. Help us to rise up, take ownership, serve wholeheartedly, and be counted in. And rest assured, brothers and sisters, as we apply ourselves wholeheartedly, the promise of progress, reward, and inheritance comes from no one else but our Lord God Almighty. Amen? It is the Lord Christ we are serving. So please turn to your neighbour. Turn to your neighbour. Give them a nudge. Let's serve wholeheartedly. Make sure all the pieces in our hearts are there. Right? Let's serve wholeheartedly. Look for all the little pieces, huh? And let's bring it back together, okay? Bring it back together. Maybe some pieces lost under the table, under the bed. You know, once you lose one piece, huh, the picture doesn't look nice, right? You must go and find all those pieces, okay? Let's find all those pieces. Of second importance, in the rebuilding journey, the enemy will not keep still. In the rebuilding journey, the enemy will not keep still. In the opening verses of chapter 4, God is already granting us an opportunity to see what the enemies were doing, to, 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 to have a view into what the enemy was thinking. They were not sitting idly by. They were not twiddling their thumbs. The Bible shows us their thoughts, their conversations, even their plans and intentions, right? We read just now. They were talking among themselves. They were having a meeting, discussing their next steps, their plans, their strategies. In Nehemiah chapter 4, 1 to 3, just to summarize, Sambalat was angry. He was so upset. He spoke to his associates. He spoke in front of the army of Samaria. Tobiah the Amrit was by his side. And, and you know, I was just thinking, beloved, if, if this was, you know, if, if, if two countries were at war, I mean, there's a war going on now, right? Russia and Ukraine, there's a war. Imagine if the Ukraine military leaders uh, somehow had a little, you know, device where they can hear what the Russian military leaders are talking. Wouldn't they, they feel so, so, help, so helpful to them, right? Then they know what the enemy is trying to do. Exactly what's happening here, beloved. Same in the natural, same in the spiritual. Same in the natural, same in the spiritual. They were making mocking statements, sarcastic questions, belittling them, insulting them, passing derisive comments. They despised what the Lord's people were doing. And beloved, when they were joined by the Arabs, the Emirates, when, they, when more and more of the enemies started to come together, they were planning, plotting and scheming to fight against Jerusalem and to stir up trouble against them. Remember we read just now? And to stir up trouble. Same in Nehemiah 4, same it is today. The enemy seeks to stir up trouble. Consider this, brothers and sisters. That the word of the Lord to us this morning is that in rebuilding our walls, the enemy of our souls will find ways to stir up trouble. You see, this is a picture. What we read in Nehemiah 4 verse 1 to 3 is a picture, a spiritual picture of the fiery darts of the evil one. These are the fiery darts in Ephesians 6 that is being launched out. Launched out against the work of the Lord, against the saints of God. The enemy despises what we are doing and will not keep still. They will look for ways. They will look for ways to stir up trouble. The King James Version calls it fiery darts. The NIV Version calls it fiery arrows. The New American Standard Version calls it flaming missiles. Can you imagine a flaming missile? <laughs> not just a dart, you know. A dart is you hold. This is a dart, right? A flaming missile, brothers and sisters. And consider this morning, brothers and sisters, that these arrows and darts are being launched. I would like to ask us to consider to attack our minds. To attack our minds. Because words are important and words matter. And the enemy stirs up trouble by attacking our minds with loaded words, by barbed words, by hurtful words to hit our minds so that we will get disrupted, we will get distracted, you know. And all the energy to the work of the Lord will be compromised. Sorry to say, beloved, sorry to say, this has already happened. The fiery dust already launched. Loose words, careless words, harsh words, tactless words, 
when released, have hurt and injured some of our saints. Some have been deeply hurt till they don't want to serve anymore. Are you with me? Some have been hurt to say, I don't want to come anymore. The fiery darts already launched. Therefore, we must remain vigilant. We must remain alert. 2 Corinthians 2.11 reminds us, don't let the enemy outwit us. Don't let Satan outwit us. Okay, because we are not unaware of his schemes. In Nehemiah 4, we already know. He's given us insight into what the enemy is thinking and planning. And on this, I want to touch on two points here. Two points. Firstly, in our rebuilding, let us be mindful to use words to build and to edify. Amen? Use words to build and to edify, not to tear down, not to hurt, not to gossip. Stay away, beloved. Stay far, far away if you think you are going to be an instrument for the enemy to create division or to wound or to injure others. Our goal in life is to speak life, speak strength, speak encouragement, and speak faith to others. Amen? And the scripture guides us on this. Ephesians 4.29 teaches us, Do not let any unwholesome talk come out of our mouths, but only what is helpful for the building of others. Speak that which can build others up according to their needs. Colossians 4.6 Let your conversation always be full of grace. Seasoned with salt, full of grace. Let our conversations always be uplifting and helpful and strengthening, full of grace. Proverbs 12, 8. The words of the reckless pierce like swords, but the tongue of the wise, what does the tongue of wise do? The tongue of the wise brings, louder brings, healing. The tongue of the wise brings, healing. So let us use words to build and then to encourage. Number two, in our rebuilding, there may be times we feel that the fiery darts are coming. And we must then for quickly take up the shield of faith and refocus on our Lord. We must take up the shield of faith. The shield of faith is God's armour given to us in Ephesians 6. 6.16 says, In addition to all this, take up the shield of faith, which you can extinguish all the fiery darts of the evil one. And let's look at the next picture. This is where all the fiery darts are coming. All the fiery darts are coming. You see, you have a, a brother there, Reading the Bible, he's, he's a Bible-believing, God-fearing Christian and he's a, he's a mighty warrior in Christ. Can you see he's, he's a mighty warrior there in the shadow? He's a mighty warrior in Christ and we are mighty warriors in Christ and all the arrows are coming. The arrows are being released already. Therefore, he must take up the shield of faith. Can I have the next picture, the shield of faith? That's it. We must quickly take up the shield of faith once you see the arrows come because the enemies of our faith are not keeping still. They are out to stir up trouble and when the, when the arrows come, you must take up the shield of faith. You see, Paul is using Old Testament military language. He is using Old Testament military language and in the Old Testament, this Roman shield, right, was a very large shield. It can cover the soldier entirely. It's made of solid material, okay, and it is it's quite heavy, yeah? It, so you need to have muscles to carry, the, you need to have spiritual muscles to carry your spiritual shield. Are you with me, brothers and sisters? Yeah? It's called a scutum, S-C-U-T-U-M. Such a shield is not just defensive, it's not just to protect you. With this shield, you can even push back against the enemy. Are you with me? You can push back against the enemy with, with the shield. Therefore, Paul records that the believer's faith is a spiritual shield. When the enemy fires their darts, like in Nehemiah 4, of insults, mockery, accusations, temptation or guilt, our inner man must stay protected. It must stay protected and we must rest in the conviction of our faith where we are sure of what we hope for and certain of what we do not see. Amen? Where we are sure, we are sure of what we hope for and we are certain of what we do not see. Hebrews 11.1 so long as we are sure about who we are in Christ. Are you with me, brothers and sisters? So long as we are sure about who we are in Christ and certain of the Lord's sovereignty over our lives, we rest in God's protection. Amen? We rest in God's protection behind the shield of faith. 
Darts cannot touch us. The flaming arrows cannot touch us. And we can respond and handle any situation with wisdom, with love, with grace, with bonus, with humility. We can handle. No need to get upset and angry and lash back and all that thing. No need, right, beloved? Need or no need? No need. No need. No need. Stay protected behind the shield because Isaiah 54, 17 tells us that no weapon formed against us will prosper. Amen? No weapon formed against us will prevail and we will refute every tongue that accuses us. And this is the heritage of the servants of the Lord. Can I hear a loud amen? Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. And you know, interestingly, brothers and sisters, interestingly, when fighting as a a group of soldiers. The Roman soldiers have this tactic. They can all come together and bring their shields together to form what is known as a testudo. Have you heard of that, that phrase before? A testudo. How many of you have heard before? Raise your hand. Anyone here? One. Only one. Ah. <laughs> is that two? Two. Huh? Okay, okay. Let's see. Ah, there it is. This is the testudo. This protects the whole group against the arrows being launched. When all the soldiers bring their shields together, they form like a little turtle, right? Like a little tortoise, right? Where all those under the shields are protected. So that the soldiers can move ahead, punch new ground, capture new ground, while staying protected. And therefore, brothers and sisters, the word of the Lord to us this morning is that in our rebuilding journey, when the enemy launches and starts to stir up trouble, the call is for us to come together for prayer and for invocation. Amen? The call is for us to come together for prayer and invocation. Intercession and supplication as a body, even as a family in your family, is the testudo for us to stay protected, to move forward in faith and to take new ground for our Lord. The truth is that as a church, if we are not praying, then the church is only playing. Are you with me? If we are not praying as believers, if we are not praying as a church, then we are only playing. And no one here wants to play and, and waste time, so to speak, right? We are in the kingdom. And as the chair of the church board, I'm praying for the board. I want you to know that, beloved. And I expect the board members, the senior pastors, the elders, the pastors to pray for their respective ministries and to pray for their respective working groups for His kingdom to come and for His will to be done. Because this is spiritual work and in spiritual work, in spiritual rebuilding, it cannot be done by the arm of flesh. Like. It cannot. Uh. Might as well, don't, don't even try. Uh. Correct or not, brothers and sisters? Don't, don't even try. Brothers and sisters, can we please join our shields together? Can we join our shields together, brothers and sisters? Can we form the testudo? Protect one another, move forward in faith. And so I want to encourage all the warrior saints here to make a special effort to join us at our Wednesday prayer meeting. Come for our Wednesday prayer meeting. That is our test studio. That's when all the shields link up together. And beloved, we need your shield. Can we see the picture again? Ah? Imagine if one or two or three shields are missing. What will happen? If you are from the other side, you will say, hey, there's, there's a missing gap. Let's, 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 let's go for that one, right? Bring your shield. Brothers and sisters, can you bring your shield? Amen? Bring your shield. Bring your shield. Side by side, shoulder to shoulder, we move forward in faith. So please turn to your neighbor. When the fiery darts come, let's join our shields together. Let's join our shields together. Amen. So of third importance, beloved, of third importance, every believer doing the work with one hand and holding a weapon on the other hand. Every believer doing the work with one hand and holding a weapon on the other hand. In Nehemiah 4.17, it says those who carried the materials did their work with one hand and held a weapon on the other hand. And each of the builders wore his sword at his side. Even the builders, they had a weapon by their side. They had a weapon by their side. So this is speaking to us, brothers and sisters. 
You see, when we have a weapon in our hand or by our side, it means you will be ready for any surprises, right? That means if the enemy springs up on us, we, 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 we have the weapon on hand. Nothing's going to catch us by surprise because we know how to use our weapons. And so, beloved, this is another spiritual picture for us. It is another spiritual picture that as believers in our Lord Jesus Christ, we are both builders and soldiers. Say with me, builders and soldiers. One more time, builders and soldiers. We are both builders and soldiers at the same time. We are building, yes, we are building His kingdom, we are building lives, we are building for eternity, we are building His house, we are building, yes, we are building. Through our intercession, through our prayers, we are building. Through the work done by social concerns, they are building. The work done by the care group leaders, by the music ministry, by the tuition center, all the ministries, they are building. But at the same time, they are also soldiers. They are also soldiers. A weapon building with one hand and a weapon in another hand. And a weapon by their side. Concurrently, a soldier of the cross, a soldier for the faith, and we must know how to use our spiritual weapons. And just now, we covered just one weapon. Beloved, just now, we covered one weapon, which is the shield of faith. But there are more weapons. Amen? There are more weapons. And thanks be to God, we have not been left without resources in our rebuilding journey. And therefore, the word of the Lord to us this morning is that in rebuilding our walls, we must know what weapons we have been given and how to use those weapons. We must know the weapons we have been given and how to use those weapons. They are building with one hand, they have a weapon in the other hand. They move around, they have a weapon here. In Ephesians 6, 11, it says, tells us to put on the full armor of God. The full armor of God. And why do we need to do that? Beloved, it's very clear. So that we can take our stand against the enemy's schemes. So that we can take our stand against the enemy's schemes. We need to put on the full armor of God. Because our battle definitely is not against flesh and blood. It's against, you know, the rulers, authorities, powers of this dark world. And so in verse 13, in verse 13, in Ephesians 6, it says, put on the full armor. And in verse 14, it says, put on the belt of truth. The belt of truth, the breastplate of righteousness, on our feast, the gospel of peace, the shield of faith, the helmet of salvation, and take up the sword of the Spirit which is the Word of God. Can we have the next picture? Let's look at this next picture. Ah, okay. So this is the armor of God in Old Testament times. Right? Using military language of Old Testament time. You have the helmet of salvation, the breastplate of His righteousness, the belt of truth, each one protecting one part of our spiritual being. The shield of faith, we cover that in detail. The sword of the Spirit, which is the Word of God. And on our feet, we wear the shoes of the gospel of peace. Each of this armor has a role, beloved, and we don't have time to go into chapter and verse for every one of them, but each one of them has a role. Some of it is an offensive weapon. Some of it is more of a defensive weapon. Some is a bit of both. And let us learn more. At, you know, discuss at your care group level. Discuss more. Learn more. What are each of these armors? How does it help me stand against the scheme of the evil one? Because you know the fiery darts are coming. You know the enemy in, in chapter 4 is not sitting still. They're not twiddling their thumbs. They seek to stir up trouble. And brothers and sisters... This is not all. This is not all the weapons that God has given to us. Praise be to God. There are additional weapons that the Bible has provided for us. And I just want to share with you seven of those weapons. I don't have them on slide. If you want to scribble on a piece of paper, please go ahead. Seven additional weapons in the Scriptures that God has given to us. Number one, the name of our Lord Jesus. Amen? The name of Jesus is a spiritual weapon. In Philippians 2, 
God has exalted him to the highest place and given him the name that is above every name. Number two, praise and worship. Beloved, praise and worship is a spiritual weapon God has given to us. In Acts 16, as they were singing psalms, hymns, when they were in prison, God shook the whole prison, right? It is a spiritual weapon. Number three, intercessory prayer. Intercessory prayer. Intercessory prayer is not saying grace over our food. Huh? It's very focused prayer. Standing in the gap prayer. Are you with me? Our Lord Jesus is at the right hand of the Father making intercession for us. Amen. He's making intercession for us. Intercessory prayer is standing in the gap. It's travailing in prayer. It's praying till sweat comes out. It's really all out prayer. Focus prayer. Peter was in prison and the church was praying for him and God sent the angel and the chains came off. Amen? Intercessory prayer. Number four, the blood of Christ. The blood of Jesus. Oh, so much can be shared and elaborated and, and taught on this. But just remember Exodus 12. Remember in Old Testament, Moses told them to sprinkle the, sprinkle the blood, right? On the door frames, on the post, sprinkle so that nothing, no harm will come to you. The blood of Jesus. Number five, praying in the Spirit. Praying in tongues. The Spirit helps us in our weakness. Amen? Romans chapter 8. The Spirit helps us in our weakness when we don't know what to pray. When, you know, we're kind of a bit lost or we're down. We don't know how to pray. We don't know how to engage in our normal language. The Spirit prays. The Spirit knows the mind of God, amen, and will pray that perfect prayer to God our Father, amen. And I like what Elder Caleb shared previously in his message, the Holy Spirit has the perfect solution to our problems, amen. amen. It has the perfect solution to our problems. So pray in the Spirit. If we have not been baptized in the Spirit, if we don't have the gift of tongues, approach your leaders, approach your pastors. Learn more, find out more. Learn the scriptural basis of the baptism in the Holy Spirit. Because that is the engine, that is the resource, that is the reservoir that we draw upon when we are doing spiritual work for the Lord. Amen. Number six, the word of our testimony. Romans 12, right? Reinforce the word of our testimony. You see, our testimony has a voice. Amen. Our testimony has a voice declaring the goodness, the faithfulness of our God. Amen. And number seven, the confession of our lips. The confession of our lips is a spiritual weapon because Proverbs 18 clearly tells us life and death is in the power of the tongue. Life and death is in the power of the tongue. So with these spiritual weapons, beloved, and with the armour of God, these are the weapons that we need to hold in our hands. These are the weapons that we need to keep by our side like in Nehemiah 4 because they were, they were alert they were vigilant. They remained alert. They remained vigilant even in the rebuilding process. In 2 Corinthians 10, we are reminded that these weapons are not weapons of the world. Right? They are not the weapons of the world. They are not the weapons our military forces use. They are not. But they are mighty in God. Amen. They have the divine power to demolish strongholds to demolish arguments and everything that sets up itself against the knowledge of God. These are the weapons that we hold in our hand that we have by our side. So can I invite the worship team, sound team, just to come up as we move to closure? Our prayer this morning, brothers and sisters, is that as a church, we rebuild and do the work, but we also need to have the weapons on our hand, by our side. And we must know how to use them. If we have not taken a deep dive into Ephesians 6 to understand how do I put on the armour of God every day, we need to put on our armour every Not once a month, no, brothers and sisters. Not once a year, no. We must put on our armour every single day because the enemy cut us no quarters. 
if we have not taken a deep dive into what is the relevance of the blood of Jesus? Why do I hear people praying about the blood of Jesus? Beloved, approach your leaders, approach your CG leaders. Show me more. I want to learn more so that I can use this weapon. As a church, as we rebuild, hold on to these weapons, beloved. They are God-given. They are anointed by the Lord. Use them when we need to use them so that we can overcome the enemy and not let the enemy overcome us. Amen? So that we can overcome the enemy and not be overcome by the enemy. And interestingly, beloved, Nehemiah 4.23, as we move to closure, Nehemiah 4.23, neither I nor my brothers nor my men nor the guards with me took off our clothes. Each had his weapon, even when he went for water. Even when he went for water. In other words, even when he went to get water, when he was having, you know, a break, a rest, when he was there to refresh himself, even when he was taking a rest, beloved, they still had their weapons with them. Remain steadfast, beloved, in our rebuilding journey like Nehemiah 4. Remain steadfast. Stay vigilant. Keep alert. Do the work. Weapon in hand. Amen? Weapon in hand, weapon by our side. Never fear. Never fear. In Nehemiah 4.20, our God will fight for us. Amen? Our God will fight for us. You see, brothers and sisters, with our own strength, the giant will be too big to fight. Okay, in our own strength, the giant will be too big to fight. But with God's weapons, the giant will be too big to miss. Amen? The giant will be too big to miss. Fighting on our own, we will stumble. Fighting with God's weapons, the giant will tumble. Amen? The giant will tumble with God's weapons. Always remember as we close that the God who is inside of us is many more times bigger than the giant who is outside of us. Amen? Because greater is He who is in us than he who is in the world. Shall we all rise? Greater is He who is in us than he who is in the world. Let's give to the Lord a wonderful hand. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. A thousand hallelujahs. Come on. Praise the Lord. He is worthy. Hallelujah. And you know, brothers and sisters, I don't think it is any coincidence that we sang the song just now. And my heart will follow wholly after thee. Do you remember that song? We sang it just now, right? And my heart will follow wholly after thee. Let us sing what we mean and mean what we sing. Sing what we mean and mean what we sing. Shall we lift up our hands now and let's just receive from the Lord. O oh, gracious Lord and Heavenly Father, Lord, we rededicate ourselves afresh to You this morning, O oh Lord. Come and fill us afresh, Lord. Anoint us, each one of us here, Lord, with Your mighty strength and power to do as You would have us do, Lord. As we follow in the footsteps of our blessed Lord Jesus, Lord, we make ourselves available to You. Let us be Your hands, Your feet, to care for others like how you care for us. Holy Spirit, fill us to overflowing right now. May your love strengthen our inner man for your good work. To be obedient to your word and to go and to do likewise. Lord, we yield our lives fully to you, our great shepherd, so that we may always give honour to your name. In the name of the risen Christ, for it is in Jesus' name we pray. And all God's people say, Amen. Praise the Lord. I'm gonna see a victory I'm gonna see a victory For the battle belongs to you, Lord I'm gonna see a victory I'm gonna see a victory For the battle belongs to you, Lord It's for the battle belongs to you We will rise, we will rise And obey you, Lord The weapon may be formed But it won't prosper When the darkness falls It won't prevail Cause the God I serve Knows only how to trust
Sweet fellowship of God, the Holy Spirit, rest and abide with you now and forevermore. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Church. The service is over. We we'll sit downstairs for a time of fellowship. Um, and see you next week for service.